So you guys already know I work at Utah County at the Health Department and I am just going to talk with you just for a few minutes today about opioid misuse prevention, which is what, that is my business, that's what I'm in the business of, is helping to prevent opioid misuse. What is an opioid? Do you guys know? I think probably, I don't know, I mean a lot of people in this room have probably been prescribed opioids at one time in their life or another, right? If you've ever had a surgery or if you've ever had a dental procedure and you've gotten pain medication, chances are it was an opioid. Um, and so it can be, opioids are naturally occurring in the body, but it also can be naturally grown. Like the, um, the poppy is where the opium is grown in poppies, or it can be synthetically produced. Um, and here, this next slide shows just the common ones. So is everybody kind of familiar with these? You've probably seen these before, or maybe you've been prescribed some of these before. Um, but in addition to the ones that are on here, you know, opioids can be legal. You know, you can get a legal prescription for them, or they could also be illegal. Like heroin is an opioid, but it's illegal. Um, so w one thing that we work a lot on is to try and decrease the stigma that's associated with opioids. I mean, you, you might think, gosh, I don't even know anybody that maybe has an opioid addiction, or you, when you hear that, you might think, oh, heroin, that's just the drug person that's down on the corner. Um, but it's really, when you start to think about it, it really is closer to home than you might think. Um, so overdoses happen all the time. You know, an overdose can happen at any time. And the reason that an overdose happens is the opioid suppresses the central nervous system. So it just slows everything down, it slows your breathing down. And then if you have too much of it, um, it makes it so you stop breathing and you pass out. And then, you know, if you don't get the help that you need, then you can, you can die. Um, so who is at increased, increased risk for opioid overdose? Um, anyone with, that has a prescription. If, if you've been prescribed opioids, you're at risk. Uh, the reason why is, you know, maybe, maybe it's your grandma who's taking an opioid, who has chronic pain and she's taking um, opioids and she forgets and accidentally takes two doses. I mean, it could, it could happen. Um, if you are in poor physical health, then you're also at an increased risk. Dependence. Um, can happen in as little as seven days. You can take it exactly as prescribed and still become dependent on opioids. So that's really important to know. Um, if you are injecting drugs, you're also at a higher risk. When you're injecting, it gets quicker into your system, and so you're at a higher risk. Mm -hmm. If you're mixing drugs, so if you're using opioids with any other kind of drugs or with alcohol, you're at an increased risk for overdose. If you're using a loan, um, obviously if no one is around to help you, you that can be a problem. Um, and then tolerance. So a lot of individuals that either have been in rehab or in the jail system, if they, you know, they've built a certain tolerance to the drug, which means they take a certain amount and get a certain high. But if, if you've stopped doing that and then you, you get out of rehab, um, you are at risk for, if you take the same amount you were taking before, you're at risk for overdose because your tolerance has gone down. Does that make sense? Um, and so this next slide shows the opioid overdose rate from 2021 and 2022. So 2021 is in blue and 2022 is in green. And we are right here, Spanish Fork. And you can see in 2021, we were way above the state average for um, overdose. In 2022, we did a little bit better, but we're still above the state average. That um, green line across was the state average for 2022. So we definitely have a, an issue here, I guess. And Susan might talk a little bit more about that. Um, but what we try, what I am trying to promote, what we're trying to do is promote naloxone how many of you have heard of naloxone has everybody heard of it most i think a lot of people know what it is but maybe some people don't 
So just to give a quick, a, a quick explanation of what it is, um, naloxone is a life-saving medication. So you can administer naloxone to someone who is experiencing overdose and it will get them out of the overdose. Um, I have lots of friends in law enforcement and I, there's this, a law enforcement, uh, he's actually a highway patrolman and he worked at Rio Grande down in Salt Lake, downtown Salt Lake. He said he worked there for four years and that he administered naloxone all the time, like on a weekly basis. And I was like, well, how often did it work? Like, did it ever not work? And he said it worked every time. Sometimes you'd have to give multiple doses, like you'd even give four or five doses before um, EMS got there. Um, but he said it worked every time, which was really good to hear. But um, naloxone, there's no potential risk for dependence. And even if you aren't sure, like if you think, oh, this person maybe is in a diabetic coma or something like that, and you give it to them and they're not in an overdose, it's not going to harm them. It works really quick in zero to five minutes. It lasts 30 to 90 minutes. Overdose may reoccur, which if that, and that's why EMS, when they come, a lot of times they'll just hook the person up to a naloxone drip. Like they'll just put it in an IV and to make sure that they get enough of that. And the person that's coming out of an overdose may experience withdrawal symptoms, which is not nice. <laughs> like sometimes they can come out and be really angry or upset um, because you basically have brought them out of their high. So just be prepared for that. Um, so what, what can you do in your community, in your circle of friends, um, in your circle of influence? What, what I would love to see is just normalize naloxone. I would love it if every first aid kit in Utah County had a, a naloxone kit in that first aid kit. Um, you, we made these decals, which I'm gonna pass around on a clipboard, and they, they're not a cling, it's not a sticker, it's, but it's removable. So it can go on any hard surface and you can, you can take it off, it comes off. Um, but what we've done is we've put these around in any location that will have us. Um, we put them in bathrooms, restrooms, we put them in pharmacies, lots of different locations. But this QR code, which you actually have on your little bookmark, if you wanna get out your phone and scan that QR code, um, it takes you to a list of where you can get free naloxone here in Utah County because it is available. We have it at the health department. There are several libraries that are participating where you can go to get free naloxone and other resources. So I'm gonna pass those around. Yeah. What is the shelf life of naloxone? It's two years. It's good for two years. Um, they come with the expiration date. They say that you can still use it after that for about a year, um, but it loses some potency. So yeah, two years. Um, also, I gave you all a list of Dropbox locations, um, which is where anybody can go to dispose of old medication. And you'll notice in Spanish Fork, we have, there's three locations listed there, but actually at both Walmarts, so at the little Walmart and at the big Walmart, we call it the baby Walmart at my house. <laughs> at, the little, at the baby Walmart, they do have Dropbox locations where you can go and dispose of old medication. A lot of people that get access to opioids get it through family or friends. You know, people, I don't know, in Utah, we like to save everything, and we're like, we might need this in an emergency, so I'm gonna save my 20 opioid pills for when I'm in an emergency and in pain. But you don't wanna do that. You don't wanna share your prescription. You wanna get rid of it. And that's what those little packets are. I was saying earlier, those are not drink packets. Don't put it in your drink and drink it up. But what, the way that works is you can take a pill or a medication bottle and put it in there. You put that powder in there and you put some warm water in it and then you shake it up and it will destroy the medication. It will make it so that no one else can use it. It's environmentally safe and it, you know, then you can just throw it away. Um, Susan's gonna talk for a couple minutes just about her experience. So there's a lot of, you know, people who play basketball and that's their passion project or, you know, women who are designers and that's their passion project. My passion project is public health. I can't stop thinking about it. I drink it. I go to, night, I go to bed at night thinking about it. So that's been my thing for years and years. One thing that I started out with the passion of traffic safety, which is kind of a weird passion, right? But that, if our youth made it through high school without dying in a traffic fatality, they were likely to survive. 
And years ago, I saw this trend that was really concerning to me, and that was where traffic fatalities went down and mental health issues came up. And that crossroads kind of got me out of retirement a little bit because I had taken time off of my public health and stayed at home as a mother. And that got me more into coming back into advocacy. I wrote some grants for our city, and we started talking about public health. And so I started to try to do things to counter this trend that I saw coming and, um, and putting them into place and using prevention science to do this, right? And so, um, but what she's talking about, opioids, that's a different, uh, or it's not a different, it's in the same vein. There's a lot of things that we can do. I've had a lot of people talk to me and say, what can I do? I have this business I wanna donate to the community. And what I've told them to do is invest in your employees. Invest in your employees, um, form mental health policies, talk to them about you know all these different things. So a human element to opioids is we have naloxone kits in the library and this is a very good place to have these because it's hard for people to approach um, police departments or to go to different places like this. The library is a much more welcoming place. Since we've had those in our library, we've given away over 100 kits. Last time I counted was 127, but I need an update on that count. And a lot of times people think that these are you know, families with troubled you know, youth or whatever, but that's not the case. These are women. These are families. These are people that look just like you and me who come and get these kits. A lot of people that deal, deal with um, substance abuse disorder uh, are, they just, they look a lot like us. And so this, um, there's a lot of books about this if you wanna know more, American Cartel, how we got here to this uh, crisis that we're in, Fentanyl Incorporated. Um, there's a lot of good books out there if you wanna read more about it. And it's our goal, my goal, it, and Bonnie's, I'm sure, is for everybody that has opioids in their home to have one of these kits. Yeah, it's a great idea. Which, so. and you can get one through your pharmacy too if you have insurance. A lot, um, many pharmacies participate, and you can you can get it through your pharmacy too. Yeah, and this this particular method is called harm reduction, and we're at a point in this crisis that was set up, you know, kind of by, um, kind of by you know the, the opioid <laughs> industry and now we're in this other where um, we're at a place where we need to be aware that um, it's on the streets and it's we're in a bad place right now everybody should be thinking about this we've seen the waves coming through different states and we have been hit a little bit by this wave but not like other states just yet but we're bracing for it and, and so and not to be an alarmist by any means but we really should be concerned about this we should talk to our kids about not taking um, medications from other kids, even for anxiety or other things like that, we should be having these conversations. And what she's talking about is the fentanyl that is coming. If you heard about that, fentanyl is super cheap to get. You get it from China, they take it to Mexico, they mix it with their drugs. They look like brand, they look like what you would take. They look like a real pill. The only way to test it is you can use a fentanyl test strip, which takes a lot of work to actually test it. And so the person that would actually use a fentanyl test strip is like a very specific population. Um, but anyway, the lethal threshold is really low and so yeah. it's just easy to overdose on. But. Yeah. I just heard this morning there was 20 million fentanyl pills to use in one area of the world since October. 20 million. Yeah. yeah. It's so many. And um, they, you know, there I've seen campaigns one pill can kill or guess which one has fentanyl. Like you can't tell. You can't mm -hmm. tell. And so it's just you know, what's, only what's take. The, sorry, what's the time frame as far as when an overdose happens to when that can be administered? Is there? It's a, really quick. Yeah. As it's soon as that happens, yeah, it you needs to be on hand. hand yeah. To the library. No, mm -hmm. you got to get it beforehand, and that's why I'm like, let's get if it in you every first aid kit. And it's good to know the. Um, the, the warning signs. One thing you can go do right now is go home, look at the warning signs, those dilated pupils, the skin color, know those warning signs, get a naloxone kit. You know, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of hope there. There's a lot of things that we can do in our home right now that we can have. But we so. would love it if you'll just take our little stickers and put them up in your restrooms or your, you know, if you sell clothes or whatever, like put them in your dressing rooms, put them anywhere that people could see them and then they can scan it and have access to where they can get that free naloxone. Perfect. So thank you so Thanks. much, ladies. I appreciate you.